In this video, I will help you set up your Panasonic S5 autofocus for wildlife photo and video. Now, these are the settings I use to get good results. So if you have an S5 and are looking to get into wildlife shooting or looking to buy an S5, these settings will help you hit the ground running. But I'd suggest to try them out first, see what works for you, and then tweak them to your liking. So I've broken this video down into three topics, gear, photo mode, and video mode. So if you want to skip to the different sections, there's chapter markers so you can just go to town. Save time and money. Before we begin though, let's talk about this camera. Now there's hours and hours of YouTube videos talking about how bad this autofocus is. And well, it's not as bad as they say. It's just lacking compared to other flagship cameras. You can still take fantastic images with this camera, believe me. You just have to understand how to work with its limitations. You can use it in any situation, such as for birds in flight. Now, is it a reliable bird in flight camera? Maybe. You won't be able to hit fire swallows in flight, but you can capture birds in flight. These L mount cameras, especially the S5, are absolutely fantastic, and I'm smitten with the images it produces. The image quality can't be beat. The ergonomics, I mean, everything about them is just wonderful, except the autofocus. But knowing how to use this camera to its strengths while understanding the limitations of its autofocus will still give you great results. Wildlife photography is possible with these cameras. You just have to put in the effort to get the results, obviously. Now, let's talk about gear. The main lens I use for wildlife photography is this, the Sigma 150 to 600 sports lens. This is the L mount version. Now, this is probably your best option for a wildlife telephoto lens on L mount cameras at the moment. I mean, you could use the 70 to 200 with a teleconverter, but why would you? The 150 to 600 is a fantastic lens. It's sharp, produces great colors, and is reasonably affordable. It has its own quirks as well, but when tied to the S5, it makes for such an amazing combo. As I said, this is the best wildlife lens for l mount cameras at the moment, so I would highly recommend grabbing one and never removing it from your S5 when shooting wildlife. For this video, I will only be using this lens with the S5, and all images and video throughout this video have been captured with this combination. In photo mode, I use autofocus continuous. Within that, I use two modes, depending on what I'm shooting. These are one area plus human animal detect and zone in the smallest oval I can make. So a five point cross. You're probably wondering why not just use human animal detect? Well, I find it just isn't as responsive as one area plus. Works great for people, just a little bit sluggish for birds for my liking. One Area Plus is the main mode I use as I shoot a lot of small birds, such as the superb fairy wren. And like most small birds, they prefer to hide in long grass and thick foliage. That's why I use One Area Plus. This setting, I don't know how, just seems to work a lot more seamless than the other detection modes. So I tend to stay in this mode as I've had great consistent results shooting these smaller subjects. This mode is really great at picking birds out in thick foliage or foliage or things where they're hidden. It always amazes me how it picks the subjects out in such busy scenes. Really cool. But to keep it focused, well, let's just say you have to be quick with the shutter button. For birds in flight, this mode is not as consistent. If you see a bird flying towards you, you better hope you make sure you get the first shot in focus or you won't have any chance of remaining in focus the rest of the pass by. It's just not fast enough to track a bird in flight. You could do it, and I've done it before, but it's just not reliable. Another thing to keep in mind is your background with this mode. If you try to capture a bird with a clean background, such as a blue sky or bright clouds, the camera and lens will just hunt and you'll miss your shot. So let's recap. Finding birds in busy scenes, such as dense foliage or foreground clutter, use your detection modes. I suggest one area plus for a more reliable hit rate. I shoot smaller birds and it works like a charm. Capturing birds in flight is doable, but just keep in mind your background. A clean background may produce more hunting and a missed shot. The other mode I use is my bird in flight or bird in motion option. This is the zone mode, using a small oval or five point cross. This is probably your go-to for bird in flight tracking. 
It's a tad old school, but firing in a burst will allow you, hopefully, to get some keepers. Now, you will, I want to emphasize this, have misses. Not just one or two frames, but I mean maybe entire sequences of birds taking off or in mid-flight. Much like this. But then on the other hand, I get this sequence. There's one missed frame here. So, who knows? Now I want you to realize that you can take great photos with this camera and it's autofocus, but just be prepared to be disappointed. This isn't a flagship Sony camera. Just be realistic with your expectations with this autofocus. If you work with the camera's limitations, understand these limitations and take advantage of the beautiful and powerful image engine inside this camera, you will still take amazing images. Trust me. So let's recap. Firstly, shoot in autofocus continuous. I suggest using two modes, depending on your situation and your subject. They are one area plus, used for stationary birds, say on a fence or perch, used for smaller birds or birds in a busy scene. Think cluttered foreground or on the forest floor. Zone, using a small oval or five point cross. This is your bird in flight or bird in motion option. Both can be used for birds in flight or on the move, but I found that zone mode works best. This next part is about the autofocus sensitivity settings. Now, I want to say this again, that these settings that I use work for me and what I shoot. I can depend on them and know what I'm going to get. I would suggest maybe try these out, see how you go, and then tweak them to your own liking. Okay, so let's get into it. You will find these settings under the camera menu, then the focus tab, AF custom setting photo. Now there's four settings here and all have their own descriptions and uses. For a while I used the default settings, which is set one, but it just wasn't as responsive as I wanted. I personally use set four, which is for situations where the speed of the subject changes significantly. I found that these settings work best for birds in flight and stationary birds. I've been using these settings since I've had the camera, going on a year now, and it's the most reliable settings I've found. So I have AF sensitivity set to minus one, AF area switching sensitivity set to plus one, and moving subject prediction set to plus two. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's get into video mode. I hope you are a patient person because autofocus in video mode is very frustrating. Much like photo mode, knowing the limitations and working around them can still produce some great results but you must always have your finger hovering over that manual focus switch. As YouTube has told us, autofocus for video is subpar, and I want to say that it isn't as bad as the experts say it is. However, I would highly suggest in getting used to shooting in manual focus. That said, about 80% of the footage I'm showing you now was shot with the autofocus. The rest was manual focus. I was using one area plus and shooting through lots of foliage and surprisingly, the camera held up. But remember, manual focusing is your friend in video mode. One big thing to keep in mind, maybe even stick a post-it note on the back of the camera, I don't know, is that you will not be able to change the autofocus when the camera is recording video. You can change it, but it will lose track of everything and go out of focus. So make sure if you are going to start recording, lock your autofocus in first, then start rolling. Many times I've missed the shot because the camera or lens just completely freaks out. I was using the Sigma 150 to 600 on all of these situations, so it could be a bug, could be a feature, but please, please be aware. So let's get into it. Much like photo mode, you will be shooting in autofocus continuous. I only use two modes here, with most of the time using one area plus, human animal detect, and zone with a five point cross. Much like photo mode, the zone mode is fine for perch shots or stationary shots, but I spend more time in one area plus. Since I do shoot a lot of small birds, the bird detection here is really great. It's quite snappy and locks on decently. I haven't noticed a lot of focus pulsing in this mode either, surprisingly, but you need to have your finger over that manual focus switch at all times because you just don't know if the autofocus will freak out. For picture profile, I shoot in vlog, so this may affect the autofocus somehow, but working with vlog footage is worth the hassle. Hard to go back to anything else. Now let's crack into the video autofocus sensitivity settings. 
I'm a set it and forget it type guy. I want a setting that will cover every situation. Now these settings might not work for you or what you shoot or where you shoot, but they work for me. So maybe give them a go and adjust to your liking. Okay, you will find the video autofocus settings under the movie camera menu, the focus tab, and then AF custom setting video. Then go down to set. I have my AF speed set to minus one and my AF sensitivity to plus three. So let's recap. Shoot in AFC or autofocus continuous, but manual focus will be your main focusing method or backup. Two modes, one area plus and zone with a five point cross. Much like how photo mode, bird detection works in scenes with dense foliage or clutter. Meanwhile, zone is good for stationary or perched subjects. Good luck trying to do birds in flight though. Video autofocus sensitivity settings are AF speed is set to minus one, AF sensitivity is at plus three. Do not try to adjust autofocus when already recording. Set your focus first, then record. Learn to manual focus. Don't rely on this camera's video autofocus. So there you go. I know I said it before, but try out these settings and see how you go. See what works and what doesn't and adjust to your liking or shooting style. All of the examples I've shown you here were done with all the settings I have just shared. So they do work pretty well. So good luck and have fun. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers.